Welcome back, folks. Uh, Steve Rhodes, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate the growl on the prior on the side. Uh, yeah, we have uh, the Dow Industrials right now down 37, Nasdaq's up 19, s and P's uh, up 6. And don't forget, folks, you can uh, subscribe to Steve's newsletter. It's very easy. Come over to our website at TFNN. You can go to newsletters. You're mastering probability right on that right-hand side. Okay, we are ready, Steve. Perfect. So let me tell you what, what everybody else, what, what it is that I'm looking at. I'll just share with you the, uh, the information. You can make your own uh, judgments or what have you. Uh, the first screen, and you and I, we've taken a look at this from time to time. I think it's really pertinent now. And this is the 95-year seasonal chart for the S&P 500. So we'll use the S&P 500 as a general market conditions. Of course, we know we've had a pretty poor September out here. And if we take a look at the average return by month over those 95 years, you can see September sticks out like a sore thumb. But from here, seasonally speaking, as we start to get into the October area, we should see some kind of move higher. But in fact, if we take a look at this chart right now and kind of going with your thought process on uh, the Qs testing a swing point on lighter volume, having busted through the uh, swing point and so forth, um, this chart here suggests that we should see some type of bounce take place this week. So, so your analysis matches what has taken place over a 95-year period of time out here. So that's the first chart that we can take a look at. The second chart, though, is taking that same 95-year period, and then because we are in a pre-election year cycle. So what does that chart look like? Well, that's what this is. This shows us over that 95-year period, which is 23 different touch points or 23 different years out there, that markets actually, we, one, we should see a, a, a short-term bottom form. But mostly what this says, instead of moving lower into October, Tom, this says we move lower into late December. So, yeah, this is saying that Santa That'd be pretty be delivering intense. coal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, he's delivering coal this Christmas, at least if we follow that cycle. And that's really the question is, which seasonal pattern is the correct pattern? Is it the one that says we bottom around now and we move higher into the end of the year? Or is it the one that says, hey, we have a short-term bottom, we do a little bit of a counter trend move, and then we continue to move lower into December? So if we go looking for clues out here, the very first clue is what took place on Friday inside of the ES Mini. So we're looking at the ES Mini charts. The green line, this is a weekly time frame chart. Yes. The green lines represent the TAS market profiles, which are really great tools that help us understand where buyers are, where sellers are, when there's a real breakout, when there's a real breakdown. So if we look on the upper le or the left-hand side of the chart, which is coming off of the lows from March of 2020, those blue arrows keep showing us when price had pulled back and found support where the buyers were at, at the bottom of the profile. So that trend remained intact. When we start taking a look at the red arrows out here, we can see those identified breaks of the bottom of those weekly profiles. In other words, a change in trend. On Friday, that's what took place here inside the ES Mini. Price closed below the bottom of its profile, and that says that we have a change in trend. So I would then say, based upon that, the pre-election uh, uh, seasonal cycle is more in play than just the general seasonal cycle out there. So yes. this is one that shows us moving lower into the December time frame. Now, that being said, both seasonal um, um uh, both of these seasonal patterns suggest that we should see the short-term bottom this week. So as we start looking for clues there, here are charts, both the daily and the weekly chart for the ES Mini. The one on the left is the weekly chart. We can see the clear break of a swing point. We can see an A to B equals CD to the downside that is formed. It's the same A to B equals CD, Tom, if we take a look at the daily time frame. So the one-to-one -one price projection area is 43.10. Today is also going to form bar number seven of a TD9 count. And that says we could be getting close to a short-term bottom. So all of this is really the A to B equals CD pattern, the, uh, the potential TD9 counts. They're all leading to the idea that, that matches really the seasonal cycle that you and I just took a look at. So, in fact, if we also take a look at each of the futures contracts, uh, and this is what I really prefer. I, I prefer when all of them are giving us the same signal. That doesn't always happen. But today, each of the equity future contracts for their daily time frame will form bar number seven of a TD9 count. And that says that we could get a bottom. When I say could get a bottom, folks, uh, and you, if you don't understand the pattern, it sounds a little foreign. As Tom mentioned, uh, there are many archives uh, that subscribers get to uh, um, uh, if they become members of uh, Mastering Probability, and it will teach you exactly about this pattern. This is a pattern that is really worthwhile to learn. Now, in order for a TD9 count pattern, to come into being, we still have to see a spike below today's low. And that needs to take place either tomorrow or the next day 
or latest would be Thursday out there. So if we do get a spike, it doesn't have to be a close below. We just have to get a spike below whatever today's lows are out there. And that has to take place again over the next couple of days. If we get that, then the TD9 count pattern is in play. If we don't get it, um, then you know we're then I'm probably back to the A to B equals CD pattern. So either of those would uh, would would assist us with identifying that short term bottom. If we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, it's advanced decline oscillator. It attained oversold status, I believe it was last Wednesday or Thursday. And the way that that works, and what, what this is, folks, when I say an advanced decline oscillator, an oscillator is simply the difference between two things. And the two things here, I'm using the advanced decline line. So that's this second panel out there. And I'm just looking at the difference between the 19 and the 39 period exponential moving average. And that's what's reflected in the, on the, uh, uh, in the bar below that where it says advanced decline oscillator. Later. When that gets below zero, that tells us that sellers are in control. When it's above the zero threshold level, then buyers are in control. But it also helps us to understand overbought and oversold readings. Oversold readings take place, we get down to the minus 150 level. Overbought, when we get to the plus 150 area. Now, that doesn't mean we can't get more oversold or that you can't get more overbought. But what it does tell us, if we study the charts and the chart action, it says that we're getting close to some type of a bottom out there. So between the TD9 counts, the A to B equals CD pattern, uh, the swing points and, and, and fewer sellers out there, as you said, we should see some type of counter trend move. So all of this supports at least a short term bottom. So what should we look for? Well, the other thing that is going to impact the market out here is going to be King Dollar. And... Um, if we take a look at the U.S. dollar index, and in here, when we take a look at the U.S. dollar index, when we close, the, when we right now we're trading above a swing point from probably about six or seven weeks ago inside the U.S. dollar at 104.75. If we close above that this week, the signal there, Tom, is that it over time. I'm not saying it happens tomorrow, but over time it wants to make a move all the way up to the top of its profile. Now, the reason that I say that is this is a bullish structured profile. What I mean by that, folks, is the profiles typically have three lines. The center is where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value in between the top and the bottom. But and so and at the bottom are buyers and at the top are sellers. So when we have the center line closer in proximity to the bottom than the top, that gives us a bullish structured view. We have more buyers than we really have sellers. And once price closes above that center line, that's at 103.26, but right now I'll use 104.75 as real key level. If we get a close above that, typically what happens is price will go ahead and seek out the top of that profile. So that's all the way up at 113.34. Now, what, what's nice about that is that actually supports this idea of that move lower into the end of December. Yes. With a stronger dollar out there. So, again, we're taking a little bit. Look, that's on a monthly chart, by the way, that we're looking at, that 104.75. Uh, so closing above that on a monthly basis, we just have a few days to go there, is going to be a real key level for us to be watching and observing. This happens to be the correlation chart. Tom, and I'm using here a 10-day average. So let's take a look at the 10 day, last 10 days, kind of averaging the direction out there. And the top part is the ES mini. The center part is the U.S. dollar index. And the bottom part is the correlation. And when those bars are below zero, there's an inverse correlation. So longer term, this supports that idea of the markets moving lower. And uh, what I would expect, folks, I would expect any counter trend move that we get here to run into resistance at about 44.24. So that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at a short term bounce up to about 44.24 before we continue to resume lower into the end of the year. And we get to 113, man. We have a, quite a downdraft, man. <laughs> no doubt. This no was doubt. awesome, Steve. Have a great one, man. Have a safe Thanks, one. Tom. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. So come right back.